Field home for seven years. Tropicana Field in St. Petersburg, Florida. He'll oppose a pitcher who was part of the deal to bring James to Kansas City. Jake Odorizzi. It's the Royals and Rays next. Royals baseball is presented by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Tonight from St. Petersburg, Florida, it's game one of the series between the Royals and the Rays. Hi, everybody. Steve Fiziak, Rex Hudler with you. James Shields spent 12 years in the Rays organization, and he was at the very foundation of their turnaround from last place to all the way to first place. And he still holds many of the records, and he will start tonight for Kansas City against his old club. He does, but he knows the urgency of getting his self together. He can't be given more, no more cookie balls up there at home plate, and he knows that. He's got to make the adjustment. Big league hitters sit in the middle of the plate. No secret there. James Shields, unfortunately, has found that spot. The opponents are raking him. This is what he wants. Sinkers down. Having guys pull their head. Inducing ground ball double plays. Keep the ball on the ground. That's the James Shields. Finish low in the strike zone. You're going to finish off some guys. Changeup's got to get working again. One of the guys that was traded from Kansas City to Tampa Bay to acquire James Shields will oppose him tonight in Jake Odorizzi. He's becoming a guy, Fizz. But you know what? He's unproven, and he has not proved himself against the Royals. He's got a 6 ERA and a couple of starts against him. So go ahead and look to give James some support offensively for, with some runs, please. The last time the Royals faced Jake... Alex Gordon went deep. A three-run home run. He drove in four as the Royals beat Odorizzi. We hope it continues tonight at the Trump. And James Shields back at Tropicana Field for the first time in another uniform. Got to take batting practice off his really good buddy, David Price. 
and then they honored him with a tribute before one of the games, a very touching moment for him as Shields has the most wins in the history of Tropicana Field, the most wins in the history of the Tampa Bay Rays organization. Joel Goldberg back here in St. Petersburg. Shields just walked by me about 10 seconds ago, finishing his warm-up tosses. Salvador Perez walks through right now, having just caught them, and maybe you could see the photo bomb classic from Salvador Perez. But as far as Shields go, no surprise, he's been struggling lately, and we have seen that. He says he remains confident, though, in his ability. He's been through this before, and he's also looking forward to coming back here and pitching in a place he called home for so many years. It's going to be exciting, man. I'm excited to go back to, to the trop and, and set foot on that mound. And, uh, you know, it's going to be a little weird, you know, I mean, uh, being, a, being an opposing player now. But, um, you know, I'm excited to, to go over there and, and, and pitch on that field. Field started his career with the Rays. Jake Odorizzi started his major league career with the Royals. They got to him last time. Can they do it again? First pitch coming up next from Tropicana Field. Chevy dealers and make your move to Chevrolet today. By the Missouri Lottery, try the new Lucky Sevens playbook, and by AT&T, mobilizing your world. The All-Star Game will be on Fox one week from tomorrow. Three Royals will be going, of course: Salvador Perez, Alex Gordon, and Greg Holland. And the Royals hoping to celebrate with a victory. They have lost two straight on the road after winning 11 of their previous 13. And here's a look at their Midwest Ford dealer starting lineup. Lorenzo Kane will leave things off. He'll be followed by Eric Hosmer and Salvador Perez. And the one main change, Rex, is Billy Butler, who's been slumping, has dropped all the way down to seven. Well, that's going to happen. When you don't produce, you're going to drop you down. And, and then if you don't produce even then, then you find yourself on the bench. So hopefully Billy can can find some way to hit one over the wall, get him some confidence going and help the team. Now, one of the reasons they've been scuffing at least the last two games, they haven't been able to get the big hit off the pitchers. Just one for 16 with runners in scoring position. You're going to have to change it against Jake Odorizzi. Odorizzi last five starts has been outstanding a 205 ERA and a lot of it has been about commanding his fastball but also Rex 
using his changeup more. He is. He's learning how to be successful in the big league level. And, and that can be an adjustment for a, a lot of young pitchers. He's got a four and two seam sinking fastball. They go 89 to 93, maybe through some 94s. Nice curveball, slow slider, a little bit of a change up. He'll mix in as well, and that's been one of his pitches. Hannigan's done a nice job throwing out just under 30% of runners, actually 23.8. Anything at 30 is really good. He was with the Cincinnati Reds organization for a long, long time, and he'll catch the young Odorizzi, who is only 24 years of age, out of Highland, Illinois High School. Milwaukee's supplemental pick, that's a sandwich pick in between the first and second round in 2008. Lorenzo Cain came with Odorizzi in that deal when Zach Cranky went to Milwaukee. Kane, Escobar, and others came to Kansas City, but Kane and Escobar right now starters in that Royals lineup. Ball one, and Lorenzo 0 for 9 in Minnesota, but had four hits in Cleveland. The Royals have moved him to the leadoff spot back on June 22nd, and he is hitting 315 since the move. Ground ball, easy play for Longoria, and there's one out. Odorizzi has been tough in the first inning this year. In the first innings, he's only given up a 0 0.53 ERA. It's important for the offense to try to get to him as soon as possible so he doesn't gain any confidence and go, go on through the game and mow some guys down. They've got to get to him. They have before. And to give James Shields a lead, hopefully he'll be able to hit his spots. They can start this final three games before they head home in the right win column. But in that start back on April 9th, Odorizzi was excellent his first three innings, and then the Royals got to him. His first three innings, he shut out KC, and then the Royals scored seven runs in innings four and five and knocked him out of the game. Haas three for four with a homer off him. Eric hits one a mile high, man. It almost hits the roof when it comes down. It is in the glove of Kiermaier, the right fielder. Just a reminder, as you enjoy a cold one, to look forward to Miller time later in today's game, brought to you by Miller Lite. And here is Salvador Perez. He will be starting in the All-Star game. And it's the first Royal starter since Jermaine Dye started in the outfield for the American League back in 2000. And of course, Sal gets the call because of the injury to the guy who was voted in, Matt Weeders of Baltimore. Salvi one for three up Oda Rizzi. Four at-bats is the most any Royals hitter has seen against Jake. Royals three and three on this road trip. Meantime, the Rays are coming off a road trip where they saw nothing but success. They went nine and two against three teams who have records over 500. Most recently, taking three of four from the Tigers. It's a hot team. We're going to have to keep them down, and really, it's up to James Shields. Keys of the game. Can he keep this hot offense down? Can he hit his spots? And they're surging despite three of their starters on the disabled list Escobar, Myers, and DeJesus. Well, they've also been pitching too now since June 9th. The Rays have posted a 3 0 7 ERA. That's fifth best in the majors. So they've been pitching too. Good slider at 83 miles an hour to strike out Salvador Perez. James Shields is coming out for KC, pitching at the Trump for the first time as an opponent.
A's all-time leader in wins, starts, strikeouts, innings pitch. This year has an 8-4 record. His only career start against Tampa Bay was back on April the 30th, and he pitched very well, gave up a first-inning home run to Matt Joyce, Rex, and I remember him coming into the dugout yelling at his teammates, that's all they're going to get, and that's all they got as he beat him 8-2. to Yeah, he's going to have to take that bulldog mentality out there like he can, and he knows how to do it. Now, the team has been winning. That ERA, though, is a little concerning. It's a, almost uh, a 6 ERA, so... It's important for him to be able to ex execute his heavy sinking fastball. He's got to be able to get some depth on that. He's got a slurvy curve, great changeup, but we've got to see more of the more speed separation between his cutter and his changeup. It's all about the same speed, and he's elevating. Got to stay down. Just about every member in their lineup has been red hot. They've been averaging over five runs per game the last two and a half weeks of the season. And they have been showing power as well. 17 home runs in the 11 games on the road trip. Rays went 9-2 and two against Baltimore, the Yankees, and the Tigers. Strike one. See James's uh, velocity on his fastball anywhere from 88 to 94. He'll, he'll four-seam it as well. Desmond Jennings is the batter, a 252 hitter this year. He has excellent speed, but he, like most of the Rays, extremely hot, hitting 378 his last 10 games. And he rolls that one to the Royal second baseman Omar Infante back in the lineup after missing two of the three games in Cleveland. Good sign. Ground ball. Shortstop. You want all stars? You got them. Gordon out there in left field. Salvador Perez behind the plate. Congratulations to those guys and Greg Holland. Quite an honor to have multiple guys going on your team. There's a lot of teams out there just have one representative. Like the Rays, who only have David Price going, and the Royals have three. Joe Goldberg, Jeff Montgomery talked to those fellows in our pregame show. Salvador and Alex were on with. Joel and Jeff Montgomery talk to the closer Greg Holland. And now Ben Zobrist. Four for five yesterday in their victory over the Detroit Tigers. He has eight hits in his last three games. And this is a guy who can play everywhere. And because of the injury to Escobar, they moved him from second base to shortstop. He'll run a little bit as well. It's important that James Shields tries to keep his shoulder from pulling out. That's his left arm, his glove side. Because when he when he snaps over towards that first baseline, he leaves the ball elevated and it stays up. Zobras gets a base hit, so give him nine hits his last three plus games. Here is Matt Joyce, a veteran from right here in Tampa, Florida. Fifth year in the big leagues. He was the guy who hit the two run home run off of Shields when James started against Tampa Bay and beat them. Joyce is a, a, a good spray hitter. He's got pop to both gaps and he will elevate and hit some homers. In the dirt, no advance by Zobras. This is not a team that runs as much as they used to. They don't have the athletes they used to have. Carl Crawford and DJ Upton, players like that. And right now they are third from the bottom in stolen bases. The Royals have stolen 37 more bases than Tampa Bay. Yeah, Madden, he doesn't play a lot of small ball. He doesn't run the guys that often, so they rely on, on their power.
Joey's with seven home runs. He's driven in 36. Nice there is Joe Madden, American League Manager of the Year in the past, next to Davey Martinez. It's Davey Martinez, his bench coach, has been for the last several years. The Rays scuffling at home here. The record 19 and 25. So Shields now has a full count at three and two. Will they send Zobras to try and stay out of the double play? I'm not sure. J Joyce will strike out a bit. He has struck out 60 times this year. Ben goes. The pitch is swung on a miss. Throw by Perez, and they have a strike him out. Throw him out. Double play. <laughs> How about an all star play in the first inning? Big smile, a lot of energy. Perfect throw. Holland, Salvador Perez, and Alex Gordon. Gordon, nine home runs and 42 RBIs. Holland with 23 saves, second most. And Salvi Perez, he's hitting 340 since June 1st, and nobody's better on defense. Nope, they got the right pick. Hopefully, they'll get the right guys on the mound and they'll win that game. And Gordon joins Amos Otis, who went five times, and Willie Wilson, who went twice as the Royals. Only outfielders with multi-year all-stars. Yeah. Great to see Salvi in there. We got an all-star. As a starter. There you go. Mike Trout getting the most votes. Well, Jose Bautista, who is the king of Canada. I mean, when there's one team in Canada, they're getting all of those votes stuffed in. So Bautista was able to clip Trout at the end. And here is Alex Gordon, the all-star. Trying to break out of a three for 43 slide. You've seen his batting average to tumble from near 290 all the way down to 263. Well, see if he can get an early hit. There were Give. a lot of guys out early, Rex, for early batting practice. Gordon, Hosmer, Moose, Cologne, Ibanez, Valencia, Billy Butler. Alex needs a little confidence going again and, and also hits to the opposite field helped him earlier in the month of June get hot. Up in Toronto started going to the left field. He's two for four with one homer four RBIs off Oda Rizzi. But Rex we have not seen an opposing defense defend Alex with nobody on like this. Most teams play him to pull on the infield with three infielders in the right side but they're pretty much straight up. They are. That'll help Alex mentally anyway. He'll say, all right, 
regulation. You got it. I'm going to find my own holes. Seeing a lot of pitches is going to help him. Yeah, the real key will be how will they defend Mike Mustakas, who is a dead bolt pull hitter, and he will hit third in this inning. Again, fought off as Odorizzi fell behind 3 0, but has come back with three strikes since. Two fouled off. That's the right swing. That was directed towards the middle or left center. To center field, a lazy fly ball for Desmond Jennings, who is there for the catch and out number one. Odorizzi climbs back in the count to get Gordon. Second baseman, number 14, Omar Infante. Omar only made one start in that Cleveland series. He had a bit of a lower back problem. But he said Rick Knopfler, who's the massage therapist, did a great job in kind of loosening that lower back area out. And he gets to start today. But the question is, will he start all three on this artificial surface? Ned likes to give veterans a day, depending on how they're doing. Now, indoors, you wouldn't expect to be any bird trouble out here. Well, they're, they snuck in. They had no tickets. For some reason, they liked the playing field. They, they were in fair territory for the last hitter. Better be careful out there. That ball comes off that bat pretty hot. Nobody left tickets at Will Call. No. They had to go to Bird Call. They're, they're eating sunflower seeds. <laughs> the Royals at 45 and 42, four games back of Detroit. Detroit is off today. They'll host the Dodgers tomorrow. Tigers. Lost three in a row after winning 12 of 14. And the Rays helped out KC by knocking them off recently. There's a line drive base hit to left field. And Fonte has the Royals first hit. He waited for a pitch up and got it. It's on the inner half too quick in there. Short to the ball. Love his swing. Good to see him get hot. Not a lot of movement. Goes right to the ball. There's no room for mistakes in that swing. Well, here's a guy who's really beginning to pick things up. Mike Mustakas. Since his recall from AAA, batting 250, but more importantly, has shown power. Six home runs, six of his ten have come since his recall. Better tell those birds that that is right in Moose's wheelhouse. And they're extremely comfortable there. I wouldn't be. Sean Rodriguez playing first base. Now he's a, a viable guy who can play different positions as well. He just took some dirt and threw it at the birds. It worked. It flew off. They were bugging him too. And Odorizzi waited for the birds to fly away. Meantime, Tampa not playing defense the way most teams do with a runner at first base. Two balls, one strike to Mustakas. He is tied with Perez for the team lead in home runs with 10. Where they need his power. Three balls in one strike. Odorizzi fell behind Gordon 3 and 0 was able to bounce back in that count get him on a long fly to center. Infante then singled. Now he's fallen behind three and one to Mustakas. Believe me, Odorizzi's being careful. You can see him. Every pitch, he's trying to guide it and keep it out of that wheelhouse. That can be good for a hitter. Pitcher tries to guide it, you make mistakes that way instead of throwing it. He wanted no part of Moose. What happens is he moves Infante into scoring position. 
The Royals had a tough time the last two games in Cleveland with runners in scoring position. They were only one for 16 in losses on Saturday and Sunday. And here's a guy they really need Billy Butler. He was hitting third and fourth much of this year dropped to sixth and now seventh because of his long slide. Once one for four he is off of Odorizzi he wants to look up in the zone here and see if he can pop one. Hit a double knock them both in. That slow breaker. He's got a slow one. Kind of keeps him off balance. Well I've heard of the catbird seats but this is a little ridiculous. Yeah they, they keep hanging out on the lines where they shouldn't. Right. And Longori. <laughs> He's the third baseman and they're in his vision. There's a ball hit on the ground. Way outside. Look at Longo may have noticed something. Longo's scaring the birds away. Look at him. Get off the field. <laughs> Let's go. Well they brought some amusement to uh, Tropicana Field. How they got in we don't know. Whenever the pitcher waves to the catcher come out here that's a body language sign that I'm not feeling very comfortable right now and that's good because the Royals have hit him pretty hard in, in the very few times they've seen him before and they're in his mind not only all of the infielders were out there but Jim Hickey the pitching coach out there as well and Odorizzi we told you had pitched extremely well recently last five starts a 205 ERA with 30 strikeouts in 31 innings typically when the pitching coach and everybody goes out there in a two and one count he's going to throw a strike you just can't miss it he was up but that pitch right there could be driven out of the yard. I'm sure he'll have the green light here. They got to find some production from Billy. Yeah, Ned Yost avoids it with nobody out, but he lets his guys swing with one out. And that is ball four. So all of a sudden, Odorizzi can't find home plate. The bases are loaded. And the Royals really need to capitalize on this opportunity. They need to. Joe Madden, he looks a little uncomfortable there as well. The Royals, last two games, one for 16. With runners in scoring position, that can't work. Well, here's a guy with 17 years in the big leagues, HUD. He knows what to do with it. His batting average is down just to 159 average after he was released by the Angels, signed by the Royals. Had success in Minnesota, but went 0 for 8 in Cleveland. Big opportunity to get Odorizzi. Raul's mentality is a little like old Cincinnati Red Tony Perez, who played for the Big Red Machine. He absolutely loves bases loaded situations, and you can see the numbers. But Raul's mentality is that pitcher has to pitch to me. He has to give me. A pitch to hit. Popped him up though. Oh, that's the last thing he wanted to do. So the Royals will need a clutch hit from Alcides Escobar, their shortstop. And Eski was hoping to make it to the All Star game. He had very deserving numbers, hitting 291, and is playing as well defensively as any shortstop in the game. The Oakland A's sent six. Eski has one of the two grand slams by the Royals. He hit it in Seattle in May. Fonte had the other one at the K. Lousy single be perfect. He took a mighty rip and misses strike one. Odorizzi is a strikeout pitcher with 101 and 88 and a third innings coming into this game. And he had been averaging 10.9 strikeouts per nine innings, which is fifth in the major leagues. Clayton Kershaw of the Dodgers, number one. 
And that is rolled foul and Escobar down in the count nothing and two. See where Kermeyer plays in right field off Esco with two strikes Escobar likes to shorten up his swing and go to right. It's like he's playing average depth. He's got a pretty good throwing arm. He does have one outfield assist. Matt Joyce in left field. He has four. Desmond Jennings has one. Now Escobar thinking Odorizzi has taken way too long. A fly out, a single, a pair of walks, and then a pop up. Way upstairs, one and two. Okay, so he's leaving some balls up in the zone. So you tell yourself if you're a hitter, what are my chances of getting a base hit on a ball that's letter high? Not real good. You want to kind of zone him down a little bit. Try to look him down. And if the ball's up, you'll react on the one that you can hit. This won't get it done. Second baseman Forsyth throws out Escobar. The Royals leave the bases loaded in the second. you the MTP of the game the most trusted player brought to you by the most trusted brand Honda strike him out throw him out and last inning was a beautiful thing Salvi on one knee he's so comfortable and very powerful with his throwing stroke that he doesn't need to stand up sometimes it's an easier transfer for him plus the energy that he brings there was a lot of Royals bouncing around before batting practice today, the guys were energized by the three All Stars. I could tell the mood was really good. Too bad they couldn't capitalize on Oda Rizzi because he looked like he was nervous. Evan Longoria goes after the first pitch from his old friend James Shields, and Ibanez, in an attempt to get to the baseball, can't, and it falls for strike one. It's a great effort by Ibanez. He did all he could to get there. He was playing Longoria in the gap at 370, so he had a long way to go. Now, I'm sure Lorenzo Cain or Dyson, one of them, probably could have used their speed, their youth-like speed, and got under that, but you hope that doesn't come back and, and hurt James Shields. What Ned Yost likes to do in this situation, get Ibanez bat in the game early and then use Dyson for defense later when they have the lead. There's an easier one. 
is to Ibanez, and he'll race over, and it is just a little easier as he has to run up that hill. <laughs> he was nice and loose. <laughs> you got that right. As we take a look at our Toyota League leaders, the team ERA, well, the Royals certainly strong in that department with a 3.69 ERA that is third best in the American League behind the Oakland A's and the Seattle Mariners. But Tampa Bay moving up, and Rex, you talked about it coincides with their sec success in early June. Their pitching, their That's offense, right. everything took off, and they've won 17 of their last 25. This is a team that at one time was 18 games under 500. James Loney, the batter, hitting 278. Leads the team in RBIs with 43, and there is strike one outside corner. Two for three in his career off of James. Loney uses the whole field. He came in on Loney, and we told you Shields beat the Rays in Kansas City on April 30th. But his turn never came up last year when the Royals faced the Rays during a four game visit to the Trop last June. Slow roller, James bare hands. And Hosmer unable to pick it up. James Shields, he pounced all over that. Did all he could. He surrounded it. Finally found the handle. And Hosmer, tough dig, almost picked it. That'll be a hit all the way. It's tough pick. It hit right on the artificial turf. Right before the cutoff of the grass. And those are two of the guys who are probably the leading candidates for Gold Glove this year in the American League. Hosmer won it last year over Loney. Logan Forsythe, what a great addition he has been from the San Diego Padres. He's 27 years old, out of Memphis, went to the University of Arkansas. Nine multi-hit games, his last 15. It's been one of the hotter rays. Three home runs he's hit this year. They all came on that last road trip. But they just came off of. Didn't get in till 4.30 in the morning here. Joe Madden said no batting practice. Nobody report to work until 5. It was just get here and go. Good fastball at 93. Salvi liked it. Look at Salvi's body language. Watch him use his glove here. Yep. Yep. That's what I like. Salvador Perez's major league debut was at the Trop, and James Shields remembers it. He said, I remember he went one for three with two pickoffs. But the thing that impressed Shields the most was, he said, was his passion. Every time he'd pick a guy off, he'd shake his fist and howl, and he goes, I love that competitiveness. You saw it tonight when he threw the runner out at second. Mm -hmm. Running off the field. Big smile. Last two fastballs were perfectly located. Ooh. Just did ticket foul right into the glove of Salvi, and that will be a strikeout. Second K for James tonight. Location good. Balls down. Loney got that little infield hit on him and they've gotten some hits off of James Shields on the infield recently in some of his other starts. James will face former teammate Sean Rodriguez. He too has been ultra hot hit 476 on that road trip.
Rex, he hit a home run at Yankee Stadium that went 445 feet to dead center field. Joe Madden said it would have been out of the old Yankee Stadium, but he also said that it was the longest home run hit at Yankee Stadium since Robinson Cano hit one 446 two years ago. He's got power. We've we've known that since his angel days when he first came in the big leagues. But getting a chance to play regular is, is always tough for a utility guy. But when you swing the bat, the manager will find a place for you. Especially if you, you can play multiple positions. He can play anywhere in the outfield and anywhere in the infield. Valuable guy to have. His dad a big league scout for years. Hit well. Center field. Lorenzo Kane is back at the track to pull it down. And that will do it for the Rays in the second inning. Photo using hashtag KC fan photo for a chance to have it shown in an upcoming game broadcast. Brought to you by ATT. This is game one of this three game series. Then the Royals come home. They'll have four with Detroit at the K Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Little brother better protect her from foul balls. That's right. A lot of families here. Royals uh, players from Florida. They all make the trip up. Lorenzo Kane told me he had a lot of family and friends coming to this ball game in this series. He said his mom would be here tomorrow, but he has some guys he played high school ball with here tonight in that Jacksonville area. Ground ball short. Zobrist has it. Just barely gets Kane at first base, who is flying down the line. That's how you run a ball out. It's a routine out. But it wasn't routine, believe me. That play almost was close enough to replay it. First baseman, Eric Osmond. Zobris, though, took nothing for granted. He got it in and out of his glove right now. Well, that's how you put pressure on. When you have speed in your game, you use it, even on routine outs. He is playing short because of the injury to Yunel Escobar. Now Hosmer up who popped up to right field first time up and he takes outside ball one. They started winning when Miguel Escobar left the lineup. Forsyth and Zobrist up the middle have been solid. It's the best defense they played since early in the beginning of the season. Joe Madden's happy with the way Zobrist and Forsyth have, have learned to work together. In a short amount of time. 
And David Price, who got the win, 7-3 to three over the Tigers yesterday, said this is the type of baseball we expected to play. And they're back in it, Hud. They're only eight and a half games back. They're finally out of last pet place. They have moved ahead of Boston. Eight and a half games back of Baltimore. Not the Red Sox, not the Yankees, not the Blue Jays anymore, but Baltimore. And there is the Rays All-Star. Leading the American League with 159 strikeouts and obviously we're hearing nothing but conversation about where will David Price be traded. Particularly after Jeff Samarja is off the block. Three balls two strikes to Hosmer who popped up his first time. Price isn't going anywhere. They believe they can win. They'll have a harder time winning without him. Fouled off. Good battle right now between Odorizzi and the Royals first baseman. I know you had a conversation with Eric before the ball game and right now he just wants to focus on breaking out of this slump and finding his groove. Yeah he just talked about picking up the ball. You know, he's got to be able to get the release point. He's trying to stay shorter with his stride and shorter with his swing. Winds that one to left field so he now has a seven game hit streak. Royals fans, are you looking to come out to the K for the second half of the season? Well, make sure to check out the new Salvi All-Star Pick'em Plan where you have the option to pick any 10 Royals games starting as low as $13 a ticket. Plus, we'll include an autographed Salvador Perez hat for every pair purchased. Make your very own Salvi All-Star Pick'em Plan at Royals.com slash Salvi or by calling 816-504-4040. Option two. Right now he is the number one option for John Farrell at the All-Star Game starting as his catcher. That ball is nailed to left field as well. So the Royals, like the last inning, after the first man made out, they get the next two on. But they need to come through with a clutch base hit. That's right. What is he not hitting his spots and he's elevated in this game. And they're getting the hits so far, but not the big one. Well, he's facing the Royals second time through the order. First time through, opponents only batting 162 against Jake. Second time through, 331. Two on, one out. This is what Alex's job is to do here. Drive in runs. He hit a three-run home run off Jake back at the K that pretty much knocked Odorizzi out of the game. See that average with runners in scoring position. That's good. A blooper towards right. That's a base hit. Hosmer coming around. The throw is to third base. Salvador Perez will make it. They throw to second safe there as well as Hosmer scores the one nothing lead. Very nice. Stayed on top of the ball. Sunk it down out there. Kiermaier the right fielder. He just let go of one to third base. Missed the cutoff man. Thought he could get Salvi. Salvi is able to beat it out. Everybody moved up second and third. Eric Hosmer he's coming around scoring for his team the first run of the night and for several of his family members who are in the stands. Good swing by Alex. Now they got a better opportunity here. Rex this could be a key play because when Kiermaier overthrew the cutoff man it took the double play away a double play would end the inning. Now they shift around towards the left give Infante a lot of room in right field. 
talking with some of the Rays about the right fielder since I haven't seen him play before they said he's a little bit uh, unorthodox and takes roots and he's a, a little bit out there and this throw shows it doesn't even plant his feet just heaves it he wasn't thinking about about keeping a double play in order for his pitcher he much must have watched video of Yasiel Puig yes. he, I think he's got a Puig arm now he's got a pretty good throwing arm but but you've got I, I just always go you got to go through the cutoff man that's right Give that guy a chance to cut it or let it go. He's got plenty of uh, good coaches around there to help him. Davey Martinez was a great center fielder in his playing day. He's the bench coach for Joe Madden. So a 3 0 count to Infante with the left handed batting Mustakas next. The body language from Oda Rizzi has not been good. He got through the first inning, one, two, three, and that's second inning, and now the third inning. He is a little bit hesitant. Tells me he's trying to aim the ball, not throw it. They gave Omar the green light. Why not? For a guy hitting 323 with runners in scoring position, he mashes fastballs. He ripped Oda Rizzi on an inside pitch. In his previous at bat, already at 52 pitches, with just one out in the third inning. Rolls one to third. Zobras has to go to first. Perez scores, and the Royals go up to nothing. But that could have been an inning-ending double play if Kiermaier doesn't overthrow the cutoff man. They'll take him. He walked Moose. Didn't want anything to do with him that first time up. See if he tries to sneak a fastball in on Moose for strike one. Average climb. A few more hits, he'll be over 200. Ball one. Straight up, Moose is happy to see. He's going, wow, what is this? Is this a conventional style defense? I know there, we haven't seen it for well, Moose this year. Well, he says, man, uh, all right. Go back to hitting some line drives. Well, he pops this one up in foul territory and overdrifts the first baseman, James Loden, to make the catch. But KC puts two on the board in the third inning. A base hit by Gordon drives in one, and Fonte's ground out gets the other home. It's the way. Tag him.
Frazier to earn a win in the All-Star game. Kevin Apier, Jeff Montgomery, Jose Rosado, or Joaquin Soria. Text A, B, C, or D to 432-432. Steve Fiziak, Rex Hudler, Joe Goldberg, and Jeff Montgomery. Welcome home, James Shields. Indeed. He did say it's definitely going to feel weird to step back in the mound where he was 47 and 31 with a 3-3-4 ERA in 110 starts. And he also earned the only World Series win in franchise history. Joe Madden said when they started the Ray way and that's become a theme it even as you walk into that dugout down the tunnel from the clubhouse it says the Ray way he said James was at the forefront of the Ray way. You can tell a big difference in, in both of these pitchers. James Shields is, is working his game. He's staying down in the lower part of the strike zone. Oda Rizzi not real sure of himself not confident. James got two runs to work with now. Let's see if he can continue to hit his spots. Every at bat, every hitter, he's got to maintain that action down. Ryan Hannigan will lead things off. We go eight, nine, and then back to the top of the order. Ground ball short. Escobar in the second hop. One out. Well, fans, you can get a new limited edition Gordo Nation T-shirt and a seat near Alex in left field for just $35. And your next chance to be part of Gordo Nation is this Thursday when the Royals take on the first place Tigers. Join your fellow Royals fans and support Alex. Get your tickets now at Royals.com slash Gordo Nation. They're pretty cool. And the fans, they love them out there. I mean, he win another gold glove this year the way he has played in the first half. Took yesterday off a rare day to relax. First pitch in there, strike one, a little cut fastball. Kevin Kiermeyer. He was one of their hottest hitters in June. And he tries to drop this one to right field and will. Ibanez cuts it off, throws to second, and Kiermeyer's in there with a two-base hit. There was no question that he was going to go to second on that a speed energy guy. He can really go get him. He, he likes to run the bases and it's off to the races here. Really nice speed. He brings energy. And they like what he what he can do. Look at him. He's, he's a speeder speed runner. And this was a guy who was drafted in the 31st round in 2010 out of Parkland College in Champaign, Illinois. Not too many people have even heard of Parkland College. They won the National Junior College Championship. Jennings shows bunt. Pulls it back for ball one. Eight for 19 on that road trip in Detroit. One ball, one strike. Moose playing even with the bag at third, just in case he tries a bunt again. Would be a bad try early in the game. Although I think Madden would like to see him swing the bat, try to knock the run in. And he grazes that outside corner. Perfectly located at 93 miles an hour. One ball, two strikes. Salvi comes out. James certainly has a strong personality and when he has an idea of what he wants to throw and the location we have seen him stand on that mound and shake and shake and finally get exactly what he wants from his catcher Salvador Perez. Well, he, he needs to start listening to Salvi. Well both of them were watching video in the clubhouse together talking about their scouting plan what they were going to do with the Rays hitters. Hey, but where he's missing is good. 
He is right down at the knees. Almost caught the low strike. That could have been called a strike. He hits the ball. It's going to be on the ground out right at somebody. Escobar now with Kiermaier and his speed and try to advance, throw him out. Oh, Eskies going to first and Jennings is out. I was just talking to talk about that. If the ball is hit well, you could throw him out advancing, but he was had too quick a takeoff. Good reaction. Usually when that ball is hit to the shortstop and you take out, look where he is. He's halfway down the line. Had Moose been at third, they might have been able to get him there, but took the out, two outs. Because Mook, Moose was backpedaling towards third. Yeah, yeah. So Escobar, let's say, uh, get the sure thing. Now they'll play Zobris to pull. He's single up the middle, first time up. Nine hits his last three plus games. Breaking ball, low. Oh, you know Salvi wants to try a pick down at third base. Kermeyer. He gets off down that line. He, you know, he's a little jumpy. Moose tried to sneak in there behind him. Tom Foley just reminded him, hey, look, in case you don't know, Salvador picks off to any base. So you better be alive. Foley says, I'll watch the third baseman for you. Good speed at third. Royals scored two in the top of this inning. Ball three to Ben Zobrist, but there are very few rests in this Ray lineup. Just about everybody is hot. Matt Joyce, who will be next, hitting 364 in that recent road trip. Got a fastball on the outside corner, knee high. Good stroke. Zobra is struggling a little bit with runners in scoring position this year, just hitting 119. Good spot. He wants to keep it out of the middle, never know, 3-0. He he gave him that one. Home plate umpire, Scott Berry. Yeah, that's not like Ben. He only has 21 RBIs, had 71 last year. And he will t accept the walk. First issue by James, and now will face another lefty in Matt Joyce. Joyce, one of those guys who does everything right handed except hit. Said his dad turned him around early when he was in Little Leagues and said, You got good power. Let's have you hit from the left side. Some kids would say, Hey, Dad, I'll change when the pitchers get me out. Yeah, you know, some some young kids are confident about who they are, but uh, you know, sometimes dads know a little bit more when that when that uh, when you get a little older and they start throwing that breaking ball, son. It's a lot easier to hit it from the left side of the plate than it is from the right. Hope Williams listening. <laughs> I didn't mention the name. <laughs> this uh, this kid Joyce, he's dangerous in there. Shields, this is a big opportunity for him to show what he can do with that changeup. Sinkers, change-ups away. Get him a top one in the infield. Good fastball at 93. His command has been much better tonight. Just a tad out of the hitting zone. Looks good to the hitter. James has that exceptional changeup that gets a lot of his strikeouts. Looks like a fastball. Time called. So when in doubt, talk it out. You know what? He's probably thinking Joyce is, is going to be sitting on my changeup. He thinks I'm going to throw that changeup. So maybe they try to go in with a fastball.
And there it was at 88 miles an hour. Rex, were there pitchers that you faced where even when you knew the change was coming, you couldn't hit it? There were a few. But they have to execute that pitch. With two strikes, you want to get him in your head. Now he's even. Still has a, a chance to throw another one. They're going to come in with a heater. Try to jam him. Ooh. In there, strike three call. Shields gets it done in the third. The Rays lead two, and Casey takes a two nothing lead to the fourth. Good concentration, good focus. Salvi's got him right. Welcome back. Here's our Mazda game break. Justin Masterson is really struggling, and this is just part of the attack for the Yankees as Brett Gardner going to knock in Dave Roberts. I should say Brian Roberts, and it is now 5 nothing. Masterson, guys, chased in the third. Ends up going two innings, six hits, five earned runs, and three walks. So a brutal night for him as ERA is over five on the year. Now, as we see Jake Odorizzi on the hill, we have seen him and other players have to contend with those birds that you guys were talking about. Did a little research for you, because I knew you guys would want to know. Now, apparently at the start of the season, there was one bird that was here living here. Then about a month later, there was a second bird. This is the first game where they have had three birds. So I don't know if it's safe to say they're multiplying or what's going on. But there are three birds, and actually, the Rays dealt with this last night, Sunday Night Baseball, up in Detroit. Now, these are the guys here. They were on the field during batting practice, and they have been all over the place. There were seagulls last night in Detroit. Well, they just fired off some flares and scared them out of the stadium. The problem here right now, and the Rays, I'm told, are talking about this with their stadium's operations people, as Billy strikes out, is... They got a roof, so it's tough to chase them out of this place. They're going to do whatever they can to get them out safely before someone or some birds get hurt. Great research, Joel. I needed to hear that. I, I wonder where they came. I want to know where you went to get that information. Yeah, that's good stuff. Well, I just know Rex is always interested in what kind of bird is yeah, flying around you know the, and the, all that kind of stuff. Little things that can be distracting to players. It's on the field, and man, those guys are living dangerously out there. The yeah. only stats we have are about. A Royal back in 1969 Doug Bird. That's the only stats we have you, Really you, fizz Really fizz <laughs> Here is Raul And that is a ball outside Kelly Banez he's seeing that that shift look where Forsyth is he's playing a shallow right field Banya has popped up with the bases loaded and one out in the second inning. Escobar then grounded out, but KC made Odorizzi pay in the third. 
And they scored twice on three hits and the ground out. Got a minor adjustment at the plate. Don't see that very often. Hitters don't like to have to tie their shoes when they're trying to focus on hitting that ball. And it's very difficult to tie your shoes with batting gloves on. So Raul take took off his right hand batting glove and and then he waves at a good changeup and that's a pitch he did not have a couple of years ago. Ryan Verdugo, who is a Royals minor leaguer at Triple A, taught him this changeup. See that that's exactly where Hannigan wanted it catcher he's saying let's get him away. So back to back strikeouts of Butler and Ibanez. And here is Eski. Boy, he sure has four pitches, and we've seen all of them in the last two batters. Fastball, changeup, curveball, slider. It looks like he went in there and talked with Hennigan, saying, you know, we, we need to mix him up a little bit more. Longoria can't handle this one, and that is a rare error. But I guess they're going to give uh, Eski a base hit. Yeah, I agree with him. Ball, wow. ball stayed down, took a bad hop on him. He has only aired six times this year. It was smashed pretty well, but I don't know, HUD. Well, it looked like it hit the, the edge of that lip. Eski will take it. We told you the Royals last time they faced Odorizzi. Jake shut them out for, for three innings, and then the Royals scored seven runs in the fourth and fifth. And that pretty much has been his track record this year. First three innings, a 2.12 ERA, innings four plus, nearly seven. He's had some very good starts recently. We told you that 205 ERA his last five starts and included in that was his best game June 21st when he beat Houston eight nothing on one hit allowed in seven and a third innings and struck out ten. One shy of his career best when he struck out eleven in only five innings against Cleveland back in May. He has struck out three Royals. Rays are a pretty good defensive team. That's just their 43rd overall error. That's second fewest errors in the American League. Royals lead the American League in stolen bases with 69, and Escobar has most of them. He has stolen 21 bases this year. You're right. I put I put a E5. They gave him a hit. So that's 42 errors they've made. That's second fewest behind Seattle. Well, if a scorekeeper is going to score that a base hit, maybe they've lost some errors to scorekeeper decisions. Longoria is such a good third baseman, he'll tell you he should have made the play. Yep. Excellent defender, former Gold Glove winner. Great star at Long Beach State. Count one and two on Lorenzo Cain. Pitch out call, but Eski was not going. He might now on a two two count. Twenty one and twenty three. Escobar's got 
had steals at second. He's Joe Madden's trying to think along with Escobar. Sean Rodriguez playing first base tonight. James Loney given the night off. He is the designated hitter today. They just wanted to get him off his legs after the team came back at four o'clock in the morning from that Sunday night baseball game against Detroit. Kane to center field. Jennings trots back, backing up, and makes the catch about 10 feet from the wall. Two nothing Royals. Tropicana Field in St. Petersburg, Florida. James Shields making his return. Thanks for the memories. He was a great pitcher here. Won 47 games and earned the only World Series win in franchise history. Didn't pitch against his old club last year. Beat them at the K this year. This is the first time back at the Trop and he said he was indeed fired up. The Royals with a 2 0 lead behind James Shields. Steve Fiziak, along with Rex Hudler, were now joined by Royals Hall of Famer Jeff Montgomery. And because James had struggled recently, what have you seen from him tonight? Without a doubt, I've seen a guy that's commanding his fastball. He's elevating with purpose, throwing strikes with it. He's consistently down in the strike zone with that fastball. Everything else works off the fastball, whether it be your slider, your changeup, any other pitch. You've got to have that fastball in the strike zone. He's done a nice job with that tonight. And I know you had a discussion with Royals pitching coach Dave Island about what they were working on down in the bullpen in their side sessions. Yeah, and the whole key is pitching downhill. And in order to pitch downhill, you have to stay closed when you're for the right-handed pitcher. And James Schultz, his left shoulder needs to be staying on the target as long as possible to allow, allow his arm to get up top and then be throwing again downhill. He was able to get Evan Longoria on a pop-up to right field, and Longo may have gone after that slider. He did. He starts walking back immediately to the Rays' dugout. Yeah, here's a nice look at slow motion. You see that shoulder. It's almost like the scope on a rifle. You're going to point that at your target. You want to stay on that target as long as you possibly can, and then it will naturally open up and allow the arm to follow through. The throwing arm will then be on top. You see how his ball is up above the head, and then he's coming down through the ball, pitching downhill. He'll take his eye off the target momentarily and then look back. Your thoughts on that? Well, you want to keep your eye on the target, too, because it's much easier to throw strikes the longer you stay on. Now, a lot of guys will make that turn. They go back and look towards second base. They do a lot of different things. But at the end of the day, you have to relocate that target in order to be consistent with hitting that target. Here is James Loney reached on in an infield hit his first time up was left stranded. You know, pulling that head off like he does can be a little deceptive to the hitter, too. Because you you try not to watch the hitter's face at all. You want to pick up his release point. Sometimes when he snaps off that that violently towards the first baseline, it can be a distraction. 
Yeah, and he's done a really nice job tonight of, of kind of staying within himself. And I've, I've noticed a couple times when he gets a little bit on the side of the ball, he's, he's catching himself and getting back on top. And then the next pitch normally is down in the strike zone. Popped up left side. This will fall in the Royals bullpen area. That's a good change up there. That's the pitch that he needed to bring in the game more. And I think Salvi's done a great job. We've seen two or three different visits to the mound in this one. And so Salvi is having an integral part of that. He's, he's, he's making sure on certain situations that they're picking the right pitch. So he's going out and talking to him. Right, Rex. I agree with that because when, when you have a pitch like James Shields has in that changeup, you want to get in the count so you can throw that changeup effectively. To do that, like I said, the fastball sets everything up. But at times when you don't have the confidence in it, your catcher is a guy that's kind of getting you relocated, get you back into that mode where you're going to throw that best pitch. He's jamming it. He's looking good. He's hitting his spots. Alex Gordon near the foul line will make the catch, and that is out number two. Fans, you can vote for the Royals Player of the Month at rallyhouse.com slash Royals, and you will be entered to win a majestic prize back from Rally House. And, Monty, I enjoyed listening to your interview with Greg Holland, one of the three Royal All-Stars, during our pregame show. Yeah, and Greg's excited about the opportunity. I, I know the first time you go to an All-Star game, there's so much going on. You can get kind of caught up in really trying to accommodate everyone, and you maybe don't enjoy the game as much as you should because you're trying to go in a thousand different directions. I think this year, in, in Greg's comments, I heard that he's going to enjoy it a little bit more, maybe take a little slower pace. He had a funny story he told you when he came on for the seventh inning, what took place, <laughs> and he said he was kind of a nervous wreck. While he came in in the seventh inning, which he's not accustomed to coming in, he runs in, and they're getting ready to do uh, God Bless America. And Mark Anthony's out there, and Greg Holland looks up, and he's the only guy on the field with the exception <laughs> of Mark Anthony. So he had to kind of regroup a little bit, but it didn't affect his performance. No, it didn't. And the Royals will send three more this year, including Greg with Alex Gordon and Salvador Perez. Of course, it will be seen on Fox. One week from tomorrow, Logan Forsythe struck out swinging his first time up. One and two. Hey guys, I, it appears to me as though Shields is much more aggressive with that fastball. He's not, you know, he's in that challenge mode, that attack mode, and we know from watching him when he's on his game, that's really his, the way that he works. He's very aggressive with that fastball. He knows he's a lot better than what he's been showing. Salvi said keep it down. He did with the cutter and struck him out. Just follow Salvi's lead. Baseball is brought to you by Panera, coming soon to College and King in Overland Park. 
and by your Midwest Ford dealers. Visit us at yourmidwestforddealers.com. We come to you from St. Petersburg, Florida, a look at the Gulf of Mexico on a beautiful sunset and our Sprint family question of the day. We asked, who's the last Royals pitcher to earn a win in the All-Star game? Jose Rosado won it in 1997. Jeff, you got 22% of the vote. Well, I didn't get a win. <laughs> 22%. They voted for you. <laughs> well, I appreciate that. And let's take a look at Jeff back in 1993. Will you get the critical strike out of Darren Dalton? Yes. What was that pitch, Monty? That was a changeup. Yeah. I didn't know you had one of those. One thing I remember about that game is on the strikeout with Dalton, I threw all four of my pitches, a fastball, curveball, a slider, and I struck him out on a changeup. So I got to <laughs> feature all my pitches. I had him way off balance, Monty. Eric tried to check his swing, but he went on the high heater. And Odorizzi has now four strikeouts. Guys had a chance to visit with Brian Anderson, former Royals pitcher, now Tampa Bay Rays television announcer. And he was talking to me about Oda Rizzi seeing that fastball that we just saw Eric Hosmer strike out on. He's not an overpowering pitcher, low 90s fastball, but he's made that fastball very effective by setting up with that slow overhand curveball. So he's really kind of developing, you know, in front of our eyes, I guess, uh, as a pitcher. He said that his numbers early in the year were not reflective of what they've seen of, of him here in these last several starts. Yeah, Dave Island said when they had him, he had a great aptitude where he was like a sponge wanting more information to make himself better. Salvi with a ground ball third. Longoria lobs it across the diamond for out number two. Go take a look here at Oda Rizzi and look a little bit at his mechanics. He's kind of a textbook guy. He's a you know a guy that doesn't do anything unusual on the mound, but he stays really you know within himself. Doesn't really try to overdo it. And I think once you learn not to overthrow the baseball, you're going to give yourself a much better chance to go see the it's like the split finger there coming out of his hand. It's got a lot of late life, late action. But he's a guy that's got a lot of pitches and is learning really to command off those pitches. But he was a little bit rattled early. And I think the Royals are in the back of his mind. His, his career, he's 0 and 1 with a 9.72 ERA. So they really busted him. 10 hits in his start in Kansas City in April. So he, I think he still remembers some of that. I mean, he was a little bit nervous going through Moose. He didn't want any part of Moose. You could tell he was a little bit unsure of himself. And it's very difficult to pitch against your own your old teammates. He played didn't play with a lot of guys on the team, but several of them he did. So you know he's a guy that. Uh, you know he, he wants to do well just like James Shields on the other hand coming you know back here to Tropicana uh, pitching for the first time on this pitcher's mound where he spent so many years for the Rays uh, there's a lot of I guess built in uh, little incentives inside the game there wow that one bounced on the turf got home plate umpire Scott Berry in the right forearm a little bit short on that one He strikes out Alex Gordon and gets two in the inning. Five for the game. Jeff, thanks very much for joining us. Glad to be here.
Pittsburgh, so we have some of the members of the trade playing, but Will Myers still on the DL with the sprained wrist, hoping to get that cast off soon. I talked to him. He's miserable, guys, not playing, and not just tonight against his former team, but just not being able to play at all. He said it's it's a big deal facing Kansas City, but in a sense it's not for him because a lot of these guys he never played with, and we always heard about Moustakis, Hosmer, and Myers. He said he never really played with Moose except for spring training, and in Hosmer's case they played very briefly in high A Wilmington. The two guys that he's closest with that he played with the most were Salvador Perez and then two years with Christian Colon. They were both catchers, Salvi and Will Myers on the same team. And he says he remembers very early on saying to his agent, this Salvador Perez guy is going to be really, really good. He said, I knew it back then, so no surprise now. The one other interesting player that he caught briefly was Aaron Crow back in 2010. Crow had some difficulties in double A, was sent down to high A Wilmington. Will caught a game of his there, and he says, what would you know it? The next year, he's a major league all-star. He had that fabulous 2011 great stretch before the all-star break and was the Royals representative. Here is Sean Rodriguez flied out to center field last time up. Great pitch and he strikes out Rodriguez six K's already for Shields in four and a third inning. Yep, he's getting ahead of guys. That's what's happened. He's his fastball is setting up that nice little sinker, his little breaking ball he's using. And it's all because he's getting ahead. Well, the Royals really stinging the Rays in this one because they have won 12 of the 16 meetings since 2012, averaging five and a half runs per game, and they're pitching as well. And that's when the Rays have really been good and the Royals trying to get there. They won 86 games last year. Moved into first place for a short time this year. And then the Tigers got hot. They won 12 of 14 and the Royals cooled off after their 10 game win streak and only 10 and 16 since. Hannigan was with this Reds organization last year and throughout his minor league career. Escobar. Two outs. Hey fans, don't miss your chance to grab a special edition Charlie Hustle brand t-shirt this Friday when the Royals take on the Tigers. For a limited time only, fans can purchase this special ticket package that includes a ticket to the game and a Royals Charlie Hustle t-shirt. You can only get this one-of-a-kind shirt by purchasing the Charlie Hustle ticket package. So go to Royals.com slash Charlie Hustle now to learn more. Royals fans at the yard here in St. Pete. Kiermaier is a good bunter too. He'll bunt. Moose is respecting that. He's in on the turf. He tied a Rays record on Saturday with two triples in one game against the Tigers. Still want to work him inside. They saw what he could do with an elevated pitch on the outside corner when he dropped a double into right center field, his last at bat. The Rays like his, his energy and his speed and all those kind of things, but really the, the power is what's been impressive. Seven home runs already. Good change up at 85. And he only hit 12 home runs in five years in the minors. So they're a little bit perplexed but sometimes when it, when you get up to the majors and 
the pitching's more around the plate and you hit a couple of them now you get some confidence going. Looks like he's going to throw another change and he does and it misses low so the count is full three and two. James looking for back to back one two three innings. He has thrown him three consecutive changeups. And that one stayed up. Got him. Four straight changeups, and on the fourth, he gets him to swing and miss. That's seven Ks through five innings for Shields, with the Royals leading to nothing. Salvador Perez, Alex Gordon, the three Royals going to next Tuesday's All-Star Game. One week from tomorrow, the Stars have a line for the 2014 Major League Baseball All-Star Game as the best of the National League take on the American League's elite. Don't miss the action Tuesday, July 15th at 7 o'clock Central on Fox. Let it go. Greg Holland. Well, he Salve. has been... Outstanding this year, averaging almost 14 strikeouts per nine innings. Here is Omar Infante. He gets strike one. The sixth inning is our Sonic Slam inning, and our contestant, Kay Bernard from Cleveland, Missouri. If the Royals hit a home run in this inning, Kay will win $300. But if the Royals hit a grand slam out of the yard, Kay will win 25 grand from Sonic and the Royals. Now, the Royals had him loaded in the second inning. But could not score when Ibanez popped up and Escobar grounded out. They got their two runs in the third. On three straight singles by Hosmer, Perez, and Gordon. And Infante's ground out made it 2 nothing. Looks like Odorizzi's settling in. He's finding the location of his breaking stuff. And the Royals are swinging out of the zone. Just like that. He's gotten Billy Butler. He's gotten Hosmer. Gordon, all of them out of the zone. The Royals had him the second and third innings. They were gauging his pitches and they were getting him in trouble. Rex, but. and of the last four strikeouts he has been able to get, none of the pitches were strikes. All right. What does that tell you? I'm just over aggressive. He, it's because he was up early in the game. So now this third time through the order. The Royals are looking to hit everything. They're thinking they're going to give him something to hit, but, but he's not. They're a little bit over anxious. Got to pick up that ball and keep your focus on your pitch. 
We saw what M Moustakas can do with a low pitch in the Cleveland series. He homered twice. Oh, right there. Inside corner at 90 miles an hour. Moose has walked and popped up. Fell behind 2 and 0 oh, and then got him to swing at three straight, seven strikeouts, and three in a row for Odorizzi. He just challenged Moose. He's feeling a lot better than he did early in the game. He's starting to settle. His career high is 11, and he did that in only five innings against the Cleveland Indians back in early May. Billy struck out last time up on a ball almost in the dirt. And now he floats one in at 79 for strike one. Billy just three for 24 on this road trip. Last homer came June 14th against the White Sox. Desperately need some power out of Billy in his spot. He was hoping to get Butler to chase that pitch. Did not, and that was that changeup. He has also worked with. Alex Cobb with his changeup, and Alex kind of has that split change. Came back with the fastball. Back up the middle, a base hit for Butler with two out. Billy knew it was coming. He was right on that one. Number 18. Challenge him on the outer half. Short, quick swing. Nice. Here is Ibanez. 0 for 2. He's staying soft away from Ibanez. He, and he's going to keep doing that because Raul's pulling his head and he's swinging at him. The Royals will see another off speed artist tomorrow and Jeremy Hellickson, who comes off the disabled list. Jason Vargas will throw for KC. So they'll have three straight guys with very good changeups in Odorizzi, Hellickson, and Alex Cobb. One ball, two strikes. He's pitching Ibanez just like he wants to. He's he got him early with the bases loaded on a, on a high fastball. He popped him up, and now he's staying away. He's not giving him too much in the middle. Eight strikeouts for Odorizzi. Five in the last two innings.
by Five Hour Energy and by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Right stuff, low price every day. Here in St. Petersburg, Florida, Tropicana Field, Royals have taken a 2-0 lead by scoring two in the third inning on a single by Gordon for his 43rd RBI. And Infante ground out for his 43rd, and James Shields has done the rest. Five innings, three hits, one walk, seven strikeouts. Rex, he looks like a different pitcher than the one we've seen the last nine starts. Yes, he's commanding his fastball. He's putting it right where he wants it. Salvi's helping him. It's making his secondary pitches look better. That breaking ball has been down in the zone. Most everything's been down. He will face Jennings for the third time. He's gotten him twice on ground balls. Once to second, once to short. Laced foul. He hasn't, he hasn't had eight strikeouts since June 8th against the New York Yankees. Kirby Yates has started to warm up in the Rays bullpen as Odorizzi nearing that 100 pitch mark. His high this year is 113. Got that one off the end of the bat. James threw that change up a little bit high. Did he go? Yes, he did. And that's eight strikeouts for Shields. Last time he had eight strikeouts was against the New York Yankees. June 8th. It's been a while. But he's getting it going. Secondary pitch is looking good. Looks like he's been doing really well third time around through. He's getting a little bit stronger. Well, Joe Madden, his former manager, said that he was going to get a great ovation for all the work he had done here in the past. He helped us become the Rays. He helped big time in the transformation, not only what he did on the field, but what he did among the young pitchers. He said he was a great leader for the pitching staff as an example setter. That ball popped up. Osmond will give it a look, but it will get out of play. Yep. And James Shields has done that in the Kansas City Royals uniform. He's been instrumental in helping the, the young guys, Duffy, Ventura, helping these guys, talking with them all the time about different things and passing the game along. Matter of fact, Dave Island, the pitching coach, asked Shields and Chen to talk to Ventura. They've uh, been a big part of his success. That ball is foul. Also, outside the clubhouse in the community he and his wife Ryan are actively involved in providing support and assistance to foster children they partnered with KCP and L for the big game James section which provided 250 tickets to foster children and their families at five Royals games during last year he started that program here he said they had a very strange law that did not allow foster parents to take their foster children to sporting events so he bought a suite and he and his wife Ryan hosted foster children so they had a place to go and uh, for his efforts he was the raise recipient of the Roberto Clemente Award in 2009 10 and 11 most in club history James will take care of this one and he gets Ben Zobris for the first time. Well, fans, you can come out to the K this Saturday for our Viva Los Royals celebration as the Royals play the Tigers. Join us in the outfield experience pregame for a special performance from Willie Vela, as well as a salsa contest featuring local Mexican restaurants Margaritas, Amigos, Cochina Mexicana, El Camino Real. La Flor de Chapas and Palominos Restaurante. Plus, be one of the first 10,000 fans through the gates and receive a Salvador Perez bobblehead presented by High V and Farmland. For tickets, go to royals.com slash viva. Two out for Matt Joyce.
James has been able to strike out Joyce twice. Once swinging, once looking. Salvi a lot more animated tonight for James. Good breaking ball, and it is a one-two count. Perfect spot on the corner away. He's hitting him. And that was a critical moment the last time he faced Joyce Rex in the third inning. First and third, two out. And it seemed like Joyce was thinking change of so much. He threw him a fastball right in the outside corner. Did he go? Yeah, he did. Yes, he did. Nine strikeouts for Shields through six innings. Great job by the former Ray. Making it the royal way. Out tickets for less.com on Wednesday. Tickets for less will be having a new hot, hot deal every hour on the hour starting at 8 a.m. Wednesday morning. Guys, you will not see better prices than these all year. Go to ticketsforless.com this Wednesday to see the deal of the hour. Remember, Wednesday is the day. Eight strikeouts. Leading on the six innings, six hits. Jack Odorizzi's evening is over. Gave up two runs in six innings, struck out eight. James Shields has been rock solid coming back from a stretch of nine starts where he had some rough times, but he looks like he has come back well against a hot ball club that went nine and two on the road trip, facing the likes of Baltimore, the Yankees, and the Tigers. And now we'll see Kirby Yates, who made his major league debut on June 7th against Seattle becoming the 39th Hawaii-born player in Major League history and the first in Rays history. He's 5'10", 185. There's his slider, and he's got a 89-95 to mile-an-hour fastball. He struck out a few guys. Got some power. Esky has a 1-1 count. Escobar reached on the infield hit. His 16th infield hit this year in the fourth. I was talking to, with Escobar before the game about not getting a chance to go to the All-Star game, and he's okay with that. He, he had a big smile. He was happy for the guys, you know, Salvi, Gordo, and Holland. And he said, my time will come. It will, particularly after Derek Jeter retires, because that's the reason Jeter is going this year. He got the votes, even though Escobar's numbers are much better. And Eski has admitted Derek Jeter is one of his favorite players. But he has some personality, likes to keep it light. <laughs> yeah, they all do. They all uh, have a childlike mentality out there sometimes, and they play, and they, they, they yell, and they scream, and... 
Have a lot of fun. And he chases a breaking ball that was not a strike, and that's nine strikeouts for Rays pitchers this evening. It's a pretty nice slider. Looks like he's got two different kinds. Having never seen him before, the Royals hitters are looking for the fastball, but he's got a tight slider, and looks like he's got a little bit more of a bigger curve. And this was it here. He took a lot off that one. Good spot. Did you know Rex that Kirby Yates is only the second Kirby in Major League history. Did not know that the other of course being the great Kirby Puckett of the Minnesota Twins and when he was asked did your parents name you after Kirby Puckett he said no they named me after the Kirby vacuum cleaner. <laughs> How about that. He must <laughs> had good hands. <laughs> in there right at the knees. How about Wayne Kirby? First name of okay. Kirby. All right, let's check it. <laughs> Only you. You and Escobar cut from the same cloth. Kane 0 for 3 today. A pair of ground outs and a long fly ball struck to center field, caught by Jennings. His nickname should be down in front. Yeah, that Royals fan, he doesn't really care too much about that, that Rays mascot. Trying to watch the ball game. Juan Carlos Oviedo is warming in the Rays bullpen. Low and it is a full count to Kane. He's only walked 11 times this year. There is Oviedo. Spent some time in the Royals organization. Pitched for Kansas City in 2005 through 2008. Base hit left field. The Royals have their first hit since the fourth inning. He left that ball out over the plate for Lorenzo. First baseman, Eric Hosmer. It's amazing. Pitchers make a mistake and, and, and a hitter doesn't miss it. That's a fastball right on the inner half. Quick hands. He laced it right by Longoria. You can see the, the black tire. Marks that are coming up, those are ground up tires and tennis shoe soles out there to cushion that carpet. And I beg your pardon, the Royals did get a hit from Billy Butler that sixth inning. I was looking down at my scorebook and didn't see Billy single to center field. So Casey now with two runs on seven hits. The Rays have zero on three. Kane with eight steals this year. He goes. Pitch taken. Throw by Hannigan. Not nearly in time. And that is stolen base number nine for Lorenzo Kane. Nice takeaway. Hannigan looked like he took a little bit of time to find his release point. But he broke before he even lifted up his leg. Kirby Yates. 70 steals for the Royals number one in the American League and 38 more than the Rays have Rays used to be a running ball club but they don't have those kinds of athletes right now. They're more of a station to station team. Hosmer fouls it off. Eric stretched his strike zone a bit last time up and tried to check his swing on a high heater but went around. He is one for three though had a solid single to left field. And scored on Gordon's hit. 234 hitter with a runner in scoring position. See if he can pick up Lorenzo Kane. Breaks his bat. 
Hits it to Rodriguez who drops the baseball gets it to the pitcher covering. Two out but moving to third easily was Kane. Yates. Eight Hosmer up inside. Rodriguez you know he's making the transfer there and he oops forgot something. He's able to. Get the ball over there now this is the sixth start at first base for Rodriguez. This year. 28 in his career so he's got some experience playing first. Salvi with 29 RBIs this year. The Royals with six starters were 30 or more one of the few teams in baseball and if Salvi can knock in a run here he would give the Royals seven starters with 30 or more. Great balance. The leaders are Gordon and Infante each with 43 and they've driven in both runs tonight. Again the Royals stretching that zone. It's a pretty wicked breaking ball this guy has. They've never seen him before. Kirby Yates. Comes from a baseball family. His brother Tyler is 10 years older and spent parts of five seasons as a reliever for the Mets Braves and Pirates from 2004 through 2009. Salvi was really driving that ball in batting practice today. Just just working on his his opposite field approach. But then when they came in on him he was lacing some balls in left field not hitting them in the seats. Just trying to hit line drives. Got him to pop up. Rodriguez. Is there for the final out. The Royals threaten but do not score. They get a single a steal. But nothing more, and Shields comes out to protect the 2 nothing lead. us around the league and we see the Yankees still beating up on Cleveland White Sox all over Boston Minnesota Seattle Toronto and LA coming up later tonight our Mazda game break takes us to Boston would you believe that Adam Dunn has never had a homer in his career at Fenway Park until tonight and that is career homer number 453 interesting that it happens at Fenway Park his first and with that he passes Carl Yastrzemski on the all-time home run list for 35th. Gerard Dyson, a defensive replacement. He's in in center. Kane moves to right. Raul Abanez is out. And I was hoping for some highlights of that great pitcher from 1937 to 1945, former Brooklyn Dodgers All-Star, Kirby Higby. But we didn't have any. I was just going by what I read in the Tampa Bay Media Guide. Where's the love for Kirby Higby? 
Come on. Get him up there. So it's three Kirby's that have played Major League Baseball. But only one was named after a vacuum cleaner. <laughs> Here is Evan Longoria. Shields and Evan good friends and he's gotten them the first two times and then comes inside. He got Evan to pop up in the second inning and struck him out swinging in the fourth. Oh, and then he hits Evan in the back. And he says, darn it. He didn't mean to do that. It's a breaking ball. No, not with a 2 nothing lead. Now the time run comes to the plate. Nah, I got him right on his pad there. That's all right. He doesn't have one of those big bulky pads. That, that, that got him right on the back of the elbow. He just smiling at him. <laughs> So now he's got to go to work. James Loney, three for five yesterday against Detroit. Logan Forsythe, red hot on the road trip. Okay, one thing James hasn't done tonight is roll up a double play. See if it comes here. Loney, he's grounded into more double plays than any of his teammates. 11. Put him in the lane. Little lane ball. Escobar and Fonte, they're talking about it up the middle. James Shields wants to keep the sinker change ups all down. Hopefully he tries to pull. Loney was just peeking to third at Moose. And James gets a lot of his base hits to left field. This is his eighth big league season. James Shields in his last 12 starts has been averaging just 4.25 strikeouts per start. And he's found his location tonight. He's got nine punch outs, hitting Salvi's target. This most likely could be his last inning. Let's see how he goes through it. That's a pop up. To right field, Lorenzo Kane is there for the catch and the first out of the seventh inning. Number 10, Logan Forsyth. Time for our AT&T fan photo. It comes from Keenan. Royals fan at the K. Royals offense has been challenged a bit late so Shields has to keep his work going through this inning. I see Wade Davis beginning to stretch down in the Royals bullpen. Open. Ned Yost is hoping James Shields can find his way through. Look at that quick stroke. Good quick hands by Salvi. Shields has solved Logan Forsythe, striking him out twice. But this is the guy who has nine multi hit games in his last 15. Barely misses outside. One ball, one strike. All three of those home runs on that last road trip. Out of play. Fourth time Salvi's gone to the mound tonight to talk to James Shields. That's good. Stay on the same page, and all of them have been with two strikes. So he's he's they're talking about what strikeout pitch he wants to use or what pitch they think is best he can get 
two outs with one pitch. Put him in the lane. He has grounded into six this year. A 2 2 count. He has nine strikeouts, a season high 12. He did that against the Houston Astros back on April 17th in the Royals 5 1 win, and he went eight innings in that one. That's where Salvi wants him to finish his changeups down low. Again, the animated Salvi letting James know it's a good pitch. There it is again. Look at Salvi, man. He is he is really worked up tonight for James. That's Ten enough. strikeouts. For the last time, the last time James Shields had double digits and strikeouts was against the Houston Astros. Heck, that's great. Good to see him getting his, his action back. Fastballs are real, are excellent. Setting them up. Finishing them off with his changeup and his slider. His little slurvy breaking ball is working pretty nice tonight. The most in his career was with the Tampa Bay Rays. And that was in 2012, his last year with the Rays, his last game with the Rays, 15 strikeouts with a complete game two hitter. They would trade him in the offseason, of course, in that big deal with Kansas City. Myers Odorizzi coming to Tampa Bay. And Shields, along with Wade Davis, who's become one of the best eighth inning guys in baseball and likely will be out for the eighth inning. A swing and a miss by Rodriguez. He's gotten him twice in a fly out to center and a strikeout. Ten strikeouts, five ground outs, four fly outs. His 23rd career, 10 plus strikeout game. Wade was a starter for the Rays and then relieved his last year on 2012 and was brilliant. Ooh. A little breaking ball that missed a little bit outside. Rodriguez smoking hot on that road trip hit 476 and had six hits and nine at bats in the Detroit series, but his old teammate has kept him quiet. To third, Mustakas has it, goes second for the force, and James Shields, seven shutout innings with ten strikeouts. The Shields Express is rolling back through the drop. What a beautiful sight. Salvia's got him working. All aboard. Who's driving? <laughs>the all-star game in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Target field. Three Royals going for the second straight year. And hoping to celebrate 
here at the Trop by winning a game for their team, Kansas City. Alex Gordon will lead things off in the top of the eighth inning. He has singled and scored one of the Royals' two runs, and you'll be able to see that All-Star game July 15th, one week from tomorrow on Fox. Well, the night is over for James Shields, and what an outstanding performance. And Rex, he said he was indeed excited to face his old ball club, and he knew he'd be, you know, a little nervous. Put those zeros up there. He followed Salvi's lead. Excellent job in recovering from the past five starts where he hasn't been able to find the lower quadrant of that strike zone. He did tonight. And Salvi deserves a lot of credit to helping him get through that. Here is Juan Carlos Oviedo, who has pitched very well for the Rays this year with a 3-3 mark and a 2-4-8 earned run average. Opponents only batting 181. Alex goes after the first pitch and mashes it down the line. Home run distance, but well foul. Ooh. Too bad he couldn't wait a second on that one. Another second, he might have hit it fair. Right down the middle, just a tad ahead of it. 91 to 95. He'll cut his fastball slider and a changeup, Oviedo. Formerly known as Leo Nunez. That's what he was with the Royals. And Alex again rips it down the line, and this time it will be a fa fair ball. And Alex will grab his double. And for Gordon, that is number 24, tying him with his teammate, Escobar, for the most in the team. Juan Ovedo, he said, you know, let's see if you can do it again. He threw the identical pitch back to Gordon, back-to-back -back pitches. And Alex said, all right, I'll keep this one in the yard this time for you, but I'm going to hit a double, a leadoff double. See how Infante can handle that bat now, work him over to third base. Manufacture this third run. That's his first two-hit game since June 20th against the Seattle Mariners. Fonte knows the situation, wants to try to move him over. And Omar goes that yeah. way, and it will drop for a base hit. Gordon's coming home. He will score the Royals' third run. And Fonte to second, going for three. And he will get there just in time. But he slowed up around second base. Well, he knew he had it. He, he saw that uh, Kiermaier and Wright missed the ball. So he saw that. He knew he had time to get in there. Kiermaier tried to make up with it, make up for it for a for the long throw again, but he overplayed it. Perfect piece of hitting there. He he knew he wanted to find something on the outer half, move the runner, but he doinked it in there. See, he missed that one, and Infante watched that the whole way. So he conserved a little bit. Jersey's saying, you better get down. <laughs> and I saw Mike say something to him and Omar smile as if to say, I know I should have picked things up. But remember, Omar, his lower back has been bothering him a little bit. And that's why he sat two of the three games in Cleveland, said he, he felt a lot better today after getting massage treatment from Rick Knopfer, who does a terrific job, part of a, the Royals medical staff. Into right field. Over goes the right fielder. Kiermaier, he'll make the catch. Tagging at third is Infante. And he'll come jogging home as Kiermaier's throw missed the mark by a good 80 feet. He just, he just <laughs> caught it and heaved it. He had no idea where he was throwing it. Sack fly works nicely. Moose didn't get it all. Didn't have to. A couple of runs manufactured off of Juan Avedo coming in here is nice and and this guy I told you he's a little bit out of control in the outfield he just turns and fires and right to nobody he really had no chance but he thought what the heck and if anybody was in the coaching box he would have been out by a mile that's right Oviedo we told you came up with the Royals organization and he made his major league debut with the Royals, made 41 appearances out of the bullpen. His debut was May 9th at Toronto, earned his first victory May 19th against the Baltimore Orioles. 
Royals four through five hit four and five hitters four for eight tonight with three RBIs and two runs. Well that's a good sign. Yep. That meat of the order they got to have. And now Butler with a grounder to Longoria. He is out number two. The Royals with four runs on nine hits. James Shields, of course, with a magnificent job giving up only three hits, two singles, and a double, and that was it. And struck out 10. And likely will hand that baseball to Wade Davis, former Ray, who is now warming down in the Kansas City pen. Perfect time for James Shields to right his ship right here at the top where they know him well. Davis continues to warm. He'll be out for the eighth inning and face the bottom of the order, eight nine, and then Desmond Jennings as they roll things over. But those two runs really important, give the bullpen a little breathing room against a hot ball club. We told you the Rays had won ten of their last twelve and seventeen of the previous twenty-five, averaging over five runs per game. Base hit by Dyson his first time up. Hey fans you can enjoy unique experiences every time you come out to the K with our new Royals fan memories program. A variety of on field opportunities will be available for purchase through each homestand exclusively through the MLB.com at the ballpark app. Go to Royals.com slash memories for more information or download the at the ballpark app on your phone and select upgrades. Dyson loves to run. He's got 14 steals. And they throw over. Two in the third, two so far in the eighth for Kansas City. Trying for their 46th win of the year. They did not win their 46th last year until July 23rd against Baltimore. And many fans remember the Royals did not play well going into the break and then really turned things around in the second half. And I remember James Shields saying during spring training that last year we bought into the process after the all star break and he said it was about heart it was about character it was about team baseball he saw that when the Rays were winning here and he said he really saw it after the break with his Kansas City Royals well James is going to get another shot before the all star break and it'll be against those Tigers so they'll have a Four games against the Tigers that will be a big series, no question about it. That will be Thursday through Sunday at the K. Guthrie, Duffy, Shields, and Vargas are the four that the Royals will send out. And the Tigers will go with Smiley, Sanchez, Porcello, and Verlander. They'll miss Scherzer. Darn it. Yeah, when they hit him last time, they want to see him. Dyson goes. The pitch is swung on, popped up. And Sean Rodriguez will take care of it. That does it for the Royals, but they score two for Wade Davis and take a 4 0 lead to the bottom of the eighth.
missed you earlier in the game. It's Miller time brought to you by Miller Lite. James Shields. His team needed him to come out in this game one of three at the top and do what he can do. Keep the ball down. Working ahead of guys, striking them out. Ten punch outs on the evening. 103 pitches thrown. Seven strong innings. Only gave up three hits. He was hitting it. Salvi was really working well with him. Great to see that performance by James Shields. Now he passes the baton on to Wade Davis. Another former Ray selected by Tampa Bay in the third round of the June draft in 2004. A great success in the bullpen and also good success as a starting pitcher for the Rays in 2010 and 11, but then moved to the pen in 12 where he really shined and is shining in that same role with KC. Last pitched on Wednesday at Minnesota, recording a 1 2 3 eighth inning with a pair of strikeouts. And he very quickly has his first batter, Hannigan, down 0 and 2. Incredible number of strikeouts with 58, averaging about 15 per nine innings. Going with that curveball, fastball, cutter, mid to upper 90s. There might be some Rays fans talking about that road trip they got in early in the morning, four o'clock, after a nine and two road trip. They were hot. Now they're probably saying, well, it, they weren't, you know, they were a little sluggish. Ah, uh -uh, James Shields and a good starting pitching will do that. It's a, like, a lot like they faced Corey Kluber with the Cleveland Indians yesterday. Corey Kluber, he didn't miss his spots. He was dominant. And when a guy is on, you're not hitting him. I don't care if you, you got in right before game time. Well, Wade Davis with another strikeout. That's 59 this year. And he cracks up Ryan Hannigan. Wade, of course, with the Rays, his career. 16 and 12 with a 3-4-3 ERA, and he gets that foul tipped into Perez's glove. So the Royals have struck out 11 Rays tonight. Shields 10, Davis 1. Now on to Kiermaier. I remember when they announced the trade. And they had James Shields and Wade Davis fly to Kauffman Stadium for the press conference. And James Shields did most of the talking. And even when he called his friend Wade Davis the silent assassin, he said he doesn't say much. He lets his arm do the talking. But believe me, he'll strike a lot of batters out. And Wade Davis has not disappointed. And he gets the first two rays out in the eighth inning. Trades are consummated to help both teams. They're not trying to rip off another team, try to sneak anything by them, and it's hard to do that. And I think it's worked. Now, Hoach, good to see him with the team. He, he was going to be the Wade Davis of the Kansas City Royals this year until he had to go, undergo Tommy John. But he's been good to be around the ball club. And Ned Yo said, you know, Luke is out. Wade Davis is my guy. He can fill that role. And they're very fortunate they were able to pick up Despite the injury from Ho Chaver. Quite frankly, he had to pick up the role. I mean, the Royals have been absolutely rock solid when they have the lead after seven innings. Here is Desmond Jennings. In there. Strike three called. Wow. Davis just cuts through the Rays, striking out a pair. Waiter, check please.
presented by the authority of the Royals and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Royals. Ray Tank beyond right field. A couple of home runs have gone into that tank. Well, the Ray Tank is empty so far. I hope it stays that way. For many balls dropping in and off of their bats. Lorenzo Kane, he is one for four, singled stole a base, left stranded in the seventh. Oviedo continues his work and gets a strike across. Royals getting seven excellent innings from James Shields with ten strikeouts, and then a one, two, three, eighth, eighth inning from Davis, who is another guy who could have been selected. And there is a swing and a miss and came down 0 2. But there are a lot of guys who got snubbed. every year somebody gets snubbed. And this year in the American League, Garrett Richards, Chris Sale, Koji Uehara, Wade Davis, of course, Ian Kinsler was very deserving to go. And the National League, Houston Street of San Diego. the middle that's going to be a tough one no chance for Kane his second hit on contact you know you got a chance that's a beauty it's one of the reasons he's been able to keep that batting average up over 300 his speed yep. another nice little infield hit top to the races no chance believe me Zobers knew that was a pocket ball I was talking to Lorenzo before the ball game and their story goes back to he didn't play organized baseball until his sophomore year in high school and he said it was a dreadful experience at the get go they put him at third base and he goes I was ridiculously bad there went to the outfield and he goes I figured it out but he didn't start until his senior year he goes the pitch swung on and missed the throw to second base he has his second steal of the night. And the 71st for the Royals this year, number one in the AL. Great to see him running. Pressure that defense. Get that confidence back on the bases. I talked to a Milwaukee scout who was with Lorenzo Kane in the minor league system for Milwaukee. There's a base hit to right field. And Hosmer will chase Kane home with the Royals fifth run and for Hosmer it is his second double in as many days. Excellent swing. With a stake attached to it. Beautiful. 38th ribby that ball was out over the plate Haas. Got the bat head there. Crushed it down the line. No problem. Probably would have scored Kane from first base. So Hosmer now in scoring position as the Royals trying to take game one of this three game series. And how just to finish that story on Lorenzo, the Milwaukee scout who knew Kane in the minor league system, he said when he came up, he had no baseball instincts because his, his experience was raw. But he said he was such a hard worker in the minor leagues and a sponge. He just wanted to get better every single day. And here he is hitting 300. And they may have just scratched the surface of his potential. Salvador to center field. Jennings with the catch. Hosmer goes the throw by Jennings offline and Hosmer will be at third base with one out. Good to see the aggressiveness of the ball club. Take anything for granted against the Rays. Pedal to the metal. Boss knew he could make it.
Gordon two for four with a single, a double, and an RBI with a run scored. He's going to come back in there with that fastball again. He missed his location as Hannigan wanted it in. And he caught too much of the plate. Good to see game one. Alex coming out swinging. Got him a couple of hits, double. Ribby in a run. Royals now with five runs on 12 hits. Infield in. Gordon waves at the off speed. And he's down in the count 0 and 2. Gordon now with a six game hit streak at the Trop. I mean, he began his career going 0 for his first 42 plate appearances. In the dirt, gets away, but not far enough, and Hosmer puts the brakes on immediately. Hannigan wants a new baseball. Five run lead. Don't need to force it out there. Particularly with one out. And Gordon just bloops one to right field. That's a base hit. Hosmer will score. And Kiermaier won't even try to throw home this time. The Royals take a 6 0 lead, and Gordon has the RBI lead back for the team with his 44th. Yes, the Royals fans are happy. Alex got his third hit and another ribby. That's why he didn't have to go home on the pass ball there. Ball bounced back to the catcher, you know. Said Alex has a chance to just knock me in. For the Royals, two in the third, two in the eighth. Two so far in the ninth. Infante the batter. Four or five guys. Great production tonight. With five hits. Four RBIs. Gordon Infante. Beg your pardon. Tied with 44 each. Tomorrow night it will be Vargas against Hellickson. And then on Wednesday night, Ventura against Cobb. Detroit had the night off. They'll play the Los Angeles Dodgers tomorrow. So the Royals well on their way to moving within three and a half games of first place Detroit. Wow. Low strike call. The Royals hitting in the clutch. They're 19 and 3 when they get four hits with runners in scoring position. The Rays, same success. 16 and 1 when they get four more hits with runners in scoring position, but they have come up empty thus far. Omar up the middle, base hit. Gordon stops at second. Right now they're finding the holes. They're blooping him in, they're rolling him past. But the Royals saw that, Rex. They went through a 10-game stretch where everything went right. They got all the breaks. Well, the Rays have seen that in winning 10 of their last 12. Timing was ripe for the picket. This game won here. They got a, the Rays team scalding hot. And, and, the, and the Royals coming in with an opportunity to to shut them down. They got a couple early runs. James Shields did the job. Didn't let their offense in the game one bit. And because the Royals don't have an off day until after the all until the all star break. Greg Holland will not get up. It's no longer a safe situation. But they may have gone to Greg with a four nothing lead. Now that it is six nothing. Scott Downs starting to warm up in the Kansas City pen. Mike Moustakas. He is 0 for 2 with a walk and also a sacrifice fly and hits this one high in the air. 
right center field deepest part of the yard the catch is made tagging at second is Gordon he'll make it a third but holding on at first base is Infante. Oviedo he's not fooling too many Royals hitters. One through five hitters tonight are 11 for 24 with five ribbies. Ooh, scored all six runs. So they're getting it done. And I understand that Seminole Medicine man, Bobby Henry, returned to the trop today. He's the guy who came to the trop invited by Joe Madden. And that got him on their hot streak. They won 17 of 27 games. Ground ball third. Longoria throws him out. Great. Maybe he'll come back tomorrow. Help out the Royals. They lead it 6 0. Six nothing lead over the Tampa Bay Rays. And a reminder: stay with us because Joel Goldberg and Jeff Montgomery will be along. We're Boulevard Royals live after this contest. And of course, Joel will be talking with one of the stars of tonight's game. James Shields was terrific for seven. Davis, a perfect eighth, and now Scott Downs, newest Royal acquired after he was released by the Chicago White Sox and. Downs will face Ben Zobris, Matt Joyce, and Evan Longoria here in the bottom of the ninth. And a pinch hitter, Geyer, has moved to the on deck circle to bat for Matt Joyce. Scott Downs will get that fastball over. He'll try to. 87 to 90. Big curveball. Change up varieties. He's in a good place. Told me before the game he had 10 days off. Went home, hung out with his kids in Kentucky. Got a little appreciation for the game. Got hungry again. Fielded several calls. Had, you know, a veteran like him is going to get some calls. And he found out the, the Royals had, an, had a spot open for him on the big league roster. He said, I'll take that. Some of the teams wanted him to start in the minors and, you know, work through a few innings. And he wasn't too thrilled about that. 12 year veteran. They want to do any more minor league time. I don't blame him. And he's still a guy who can get left handers out. Got that right. Lefties were only hitting 224 against him when he was released. But Chicago's bullpen certainly not as strong as the Royals. And because of that downs was used more. Against not only left handers but against righties and that's where he got hurt. Zobris to switch hitter. Ben. Has been on twice with a single and a walk. And that is shot past Mustakis at third base for a single. As Zobris puts the brakes on, knowing Gordon has a great arm. Hot corner, hot smash. 
Alex Gordon attacked that ball to keep that runner from scoring. That's a beautiful thing. What was even better was to see Lorenzo Kane busting in from right field to back up the play, the throw. Six nothing. Like the way the Royals are playing. Aggressive on the bases, attacking, tagging up, moving up runners, backing up bases. This is the, the kind of intensity they need in this series. Here is Geyer. Pinch hitting for Joyce. Ball one. Geyer's, Geyer's one for eight off the bench as a pinch hitter. Retsy, it, it's interesting what you just said that Downs went back to Kentucky and kind of re-energized himself because so many of these guys got in the game because they love it. And it is a game so hard it can grind you down. Hosmer going after this one in foul territory, but it's beyond his reach in the Tampa Bay bullpen. And I don't know how many guys you and I have talked to who have gone through that, whether they stepped out of the game for a year or had injuries that kept them out of the game and they fell back in love with the game. Yeah, it's important to you know catch your breath. Salvi pointing back to Scott down saying that's where I want the fastball in jam him and then we'll set him up with a changeup. Or big big backdoor breaker. It's that moose no curveballs coming. Beauty, great yeah. spot. Oh man, that was a beauty. That's yeah. the curveball you were talking about. But it was the first. It was the pitch before that that set that up. That nice fastball inside. Great location. Well, Bruce Chen and Scott Downs are two of five remaining Montreal Expos. Bruce with the Expos in 2002, Downs in 2000, Andy Chavez, Bartolo Colon, and Miseris Turris are the others. And in the Royals broadcast booth, a former Montreal Expo, Rex Hudler. Third base coach Tom Foley was a Montreal Expo, and so was Davey Martinez, the bench coach for Joe Madden. That was Foley. We platooned. He, he took the righties, I took the lefties. Davey, fantastic center fielder. He platooned out in center with Otis Nixon. Never saw a ball fall. Good breaking ball again to Longoria. But did you see? The ballpark up in Montreal, the Big O in spring training, 49,000 for two exhibition games that were played there this spring was really a positive sign. I mean, they'd like to get baseball back up there someday in Montreal, but they're going to need to build them a new downtown stadium. Yeah, you really enjoyed your baseball experience there, and you stayed there in the offseason. It was a great place. And, uh, you know, the Big O was where they had the Olympics back in, I want to say that was 96, maybe. And it was a big building, and you know they, they played their baseball. It must have been '76. Yeah, you're a little Ooh. older than that. Yeah, sorry about that. And, and uh, that was when Bruce Jenner was the decathlon yep. winner, and and that was the only place they had to play. And it's not the, the most attractive place. So eventually, the interest stopped, and the fans stopped coming, and they had to move them to Washington. Yeah, I really believe that if you built them an indoor ballpark with a retractable roof because so many people in northern cities want to be outside when the sun is shining. Downtown ballpark would, would flourish in my opinion in Mar Montreal. Long run for Lorenzo Cain. Oh man that's a heck of a play. And then what makes you a little nervous is that mound down there that's in play. Seen a lot of guys get hurt on that mound. Lorenzo Cain had no fear. He wanted to catch this ball. Look at the hustle. Look at those strides. Stayed away from the big part of the mound. Look at that concentration. 
Yeah. That's right. It's a 6 nothing game. The Royals are playing ball all the way through this until the final out. Lorenzo said a lot of his high school teammates drove down from the Jacksonville area to watch him play this evening. His mom will be here tomorrow. And I said a lot of them didn't know you'd make it to the major leagues. He goes, all of them didn't know I'd make it to the major leagues. Runner goes. The pitch is taken. It'll be indifference. Basically, the Royals don't care if he steals second base or takes second base. Two outs for James Loney, who has reached on an infield hit. Downs gets it. The Royals win it 6 0, and a great memory for James Shields and Wade Davis, two former Rays who pitched brilliantly. No doubt about it. They might be saying, clean up on aisle nine. <laughs> the Royals got game one. Joel will talk to one of the stars when we come back.